Apple has just officially announced their next event, happening on October 13th at 10 a.m., which is one week from today. So in this video, let's go through everything we should expect to get announced and some things that we probably shouldn't expect anymore due to some very recent leaks and using some common sense as well. So let's get right into it. First off, Apple's event invitations sometimes give a very subtle hint at what to expect. And at first glance, this high speed invitation doesn't really seem to make sense. However, if you take a closer look, you can tell that the two outside rings look exactly like the top of Apple's HomePod smart speaker. And if you look at the inside, it kind of looks like a smaller HomePod, except looking at it from an angle. And this actually makes a whole lot of sense because a new HomePod mini has been rumored for months now, which will compete with Amazon's more budget-friendly Echo speakers. Now, what makes this even more likely is an article posted yesterday by Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, a very reliable Apple leaker. Apparently, Apple has stopped selling rival earphones and smart speakers ahead of their October 13th event, including headphones from Bose, Logitech, and smart speakers from Sonos. Apple even went as far as to remove all third-party audio devices from their retail stores telling Bose that from now on and going into the future, Apple will only be selling Apple and Beats speakers. This is huge news, which hints at Apple releasing new audio products next week, including a potential HomePod 2 and a new HomePod mini at a more budget-friendly price, probably at a price range from $100 to $150. On top of that, Apple's new AirPods Studio on-ear headphones have been rumored for months as well, and John Prosser even got his hands on them and gave us 3D renders of what they'll look like, saying that they're basically ready to ship. These headphones are incredibly interesting because they'll be the first set of headphones that are fully reversible, being able to detect the left and right ears automatically by using Apple's new U1 chip. And these will probably be expensive as much as $350. Along with that, John Prosser also showed off 3D renders of Apple's long-rumored AirTags, which basically utilize the new U1 chip to give you incredibly accurate device tracking. AirTags are gonna be small, probably around the size of a quarter or a half dollar, allowing you to place them into any item like your backpack or even your wallet, and you'll be able to name them and track them just like you would with any Apple device you currently own. So we should definitely expect Apple to announce those, but we're not really sure how much they're gonna cost. Now what's interesting is that Apple released the Apple Watch Series 6 last month, which actually includes Apple's new U1 chip, but Apple didn't really mention the benefits of the chip. And John Prosser has said that every single portable flagship Apple device going forward will be coming with the U1 chip built in, and he mentioned that it's very important to the future of Apple. So we should definitely expect Apple to talk about that new U1 chip at the event and about all of the new benefits. Now, before we get into the star of the show, the iPhone 12, I wanna mention that there are already quite a few things that Apple can talk about at this event, so it's already getting quite full. I know you guys are waiting for Apple Silicon Max, a brand new Apple TV with the crazy A14X chip meant for gaming, alongside a new gaming controller, and a very small chance of a new iPad Pro refresh. But to be completely honest, I have a feeling that Apple isn't going to announce any of those products until next month. Because if you think about it, they will all either be using the high performance A14X chip or they're gonna be based on that chip in the case of the Apple Silicon Mac chips. So to me, it wouldn't make sense to cram the A14X and Apple Silicon Mac stuff into the iPhone event, especially since both the iPhone and the new Macs are gonna fight for your wallet because people are so excited for them. So I personally think that we won't see the new Macs until next month. But if by some chance it is gonna happen next week, I'm gonna be extremely excited. Now with that said, the last thing we need to get into before we talk about the new iPhone 12 lineup is the potential revival of the air power charging mat. Rumors have been floating around about this for a while now, with potentially two new charging mats, the Air Power and the Air Power Mini. While the Mini can charge just one device, the larger mat is gonna be able to charge three devices at the same time and it's rumored to be priced at $250, which is incredibly expensive for a wireless charger. And then the AirPower Mini could be priced anywhere from $100 to $150. 
And with that, let's finally get into the iPhone 12 lineup. There are four new iPhones that we should expect this year, coming from the iPhone 12 mini with a 5.4 inch display, the iPhone 12 with a 6.1 inch display, the iPhone 12 Pro with the same 6.1 inch display, and an iPhone 12 Pro Max with a 6.7 inch display. Now the most important standout feature of the new iPhones is the new design with squared off edges, similar to how the iPad Pro or the new iPad Air looks. All of them should be getting an OLED display this time around, with rumors pointing to the lower end iPhone 12 models getting lower quality OLED displays, probably with worse color quality and lower brightness, and those models will probably be getting some new color options as well. The Pro models are rumored to be getting a new midnight blue color, which will look like a dark navy blue. They should all be getting a notch with Face ID, although the 12 mini is rumored to be getting a slightly smaller notch, since the display is so small at 5.4 inches. They're all gonna be sticking to a lightning port instead of moving on to USB-C, and some leaks have shown that the new iPhones should be coming with a new braided lightning to USB-C cable, but without a power adapter in the box, just like they're already doing with the new Apple Watches. And we shouldn't expect EarPods to go into the box either, which will lead to more sales of the AirPods and the new AirPods Studio. Perhaps the most exciting thing is that these new iPhones will be getting the A14 Bionic chip, which Apple has already announced is going into the iPad Air 4. And Apple hasn't released that yet, probably because they want the iPhone to ship before the iPad Air, so it doesn't spoil the performance of the A14. Now, if you saw my video from yesterday, where I showed off leaked benchmarks of that chip, you'll know that the performance of the iPhone 12s is gonna be absolutely insane, so be sure to check that video out after this video is over. Now on the other hand, some reports are noting that there's a chance that the iPhone 12 mini will be coming with a slightly scaled down version of the A14, potentially the B14, which sounds pretty weird for Apple to do, but if you think about it, the incredibly small size is gonna lead to lower battery life, so maybe they want it to be more efficient. Now along with that, every iPhone this year is gonna be coming with 5G support, but only the Pro models are gonna be getting the super fast millimeter wave 5G. On top of that, the Pro models should feature a new LiDAR scanner, just like we already have on the iPad Pro, but a smaller version. And this could enable improved portrait mode photos and some other new features as well. We're also expecting the camera bump to get larger, featuring larger lenses with larger sensors, which will greatly help for low light photos and video, and it'll probably enable night mode for more camera modes. As far as the storage, the Pro models are rumored to be coming with 128 gigabytes, which is really nice, but the lower end models are rumored to be coming with only 64 gigs at the base price, which is why the prices could start as low as $649, which is really impressive for having 5G. Now perhaps the most disappointing thing about this year's iPhones is that the Pro models are probably not getting 120 Hz ProMotion displays, now that most of the rumors are pointing to that feature only coming next year. So there you guys go, that's everything that we should expect next week at Apple's October 13th event. And if this video is helpful, go ahead and tap the like button and click the circle above to subscribe and be sure to check out the A14 Bionic leaks, that video right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.